Matthew Hunt says, why can't Yamato have her character arc after joining the crew? Being trapped in one place until now could cause her character to be stagnant, right? Uh, she could have a character arc after joining the crew. That's completely fair. But at the same time, it's like every straw hat kind of what, what felt like made them into a straw hat was them having the character arc to join the crew. Like it was the character arc that shaped them into the character they needed to be to join the crew. And I'm tired of people bringing up Robin because this is something that I addressed in my Yamato video, which is that Robin was not a true straw hat until Ennis Lobby. So this is not the same thing. This is a thing where it's like Yamato is being treated like a real straw hat as of right now. Yamato, like Robin herself, was very, very clear that she didn't. She had no plans on being a long. Like it was very obvious that she was going through her usual cycle of like, well, now I'm gonna hop onto this crew, and like slowly she warmed up to them, and slowly that led to this pivotal moment for her character, where she finally got her character arc that then shaped her into a straw hat, and it was the most important straw hat character arc in the entire series. So Robin is like the polar opposite of Yamato. Mauricio Delval says, how are you going to improve the second Morge plush? If the raid doesn't fail, then there's not going to be a second Morge plush. Because the only thing I could do again is Luffy. I would love to do a Kaido version of the Morge plush if, uh, if the raid failed. But we know how it is. Maybe I'll do another Morge plush anyway. But it'd have to be a really good idea. Kakashi Snitch 9 says, if this is actually how Wano ends and how Kaido's character arc ends, would you agree he's probably the worst main villain in One Piece, especially with how hyped up he was low-key has me worried for Blackbeard and Akainu? I need to reread Wano. Before I make any sort of like, I, obviously I've said like little comments and little, little jabs here and there so far. I'm not going to pretend I haven't over the course of this stream, but I'm trying not to make any sort of very strong proclamations or statements or whatever basically about... Uh, my personal perceived quality of the arc or my personal perceived view of like the writing decisions etc uh how good i think a character is or whatever how well handled something was until i have reread the full arc because i think that's fair okay so kaido i'm gonna hold my thoughts on that the one thing that i think a lot of people who are making arguments for kaido like too many expectations his backstory didn't need to be that long like you know crocodile didn't have a backstory etc I think the big key missing piece people are having about that conversation, and again, I'm going to reread the full arc before I, I give my argument and my take on it, right? But at the moment, I think what people are missing is that Kaido is not comparable to other villains because um, Oda clearly planted significantly, significantly more in terms of Kaido's character, and you can, like, it, it's very explicit throughout Wano, raised questions, right? Raised questions throughout Wano, through Kaido, the statements he was making, um, the questions that he himself explicitly was raising, and the hints that he was giving, all of it was shaping to something basically more complex, right? It's basically like with Crocodile, we found out that there was a lot more complexity and depth to Crocodile later on. Through small things like his cover story, his dream of being Pirate King, his relationship with Whitebeard or whatever, whatever happened to him in the past, right? Right. So that's good. Oda raised those questions and kind of gave us more information about Crocodile as we went on. In the Alabaster arc, Oda really, really tried not to do that. He tried to keep Crocodile a very um, straightforward, clear-cut character. His philosophy was very easily understandable of what, what he doesn't believe in trusting people. He doesn't believe in having friends, etc. There weren't a lot of question marks surrounding Crocodile. There were some small ones dropped towards the end in terms of like, oh, wait, it sounds like you had some interesting past experience on the Grand Line. Tell me about that right before Luffy uh, defeated him, right? But at the same time, Oda's not trying to raise a lot of questions around Crocodile. Same thing with like a character like Eno. Same thing like with a character like Luchi. Kaido is different in that Kaido very clearly and explicitly, there's so much more raised uh, over the course of Wano surrounding his character that didn't end up going anywhere and kind of retroactively as far as I remember, makes a lot of what he seemed to represent and what he seemed to talk about or be hinting at kind of lose all weight, okay? So we, did, we weren't having this discussion with Doflamingo. With Doflamingo, everyone was really, really happy because it wasn't like there was any missing pieces or questions that we felt. We felt as though Doflamingo was more fleshed out than many of us expected, right? Kaido, it's really the opposite. And that's not reader expectations. That's stuff that I could easily go throughout the Wano arc and compile a quick video of all things that are clear narrative setups or... <coughs> questions explicitly raised surrounding his character or things that seem to be important and uh, motivations that need answers for. 
um, that he himself suggests there is an answer for that we then don't get, which is very, very drastically different from other One Piece villains. So you can't compare him to other One Piece villains because the setups that we got for him are setups we did not get for other One Piece villains.